Uh, I was uh, explaining why it was that the opera singer had fallen from his or her high estate. I was uh, telling you that in the old days, by early days, that they were gods and goddesses, and they had no competition for uh, public adoration or social acclaim. But opera was limited to uh, an audience, very few, a few thousand here and there. Of course, it commanded a great deal of what I might call uh, approval, in a way, because to give opera in countries like England and, uh, and America, which were not um, naturally operatic, meant a good deal of prestige to those who were undertaking its production. But to the beginning of the century, or shortly afterward, uh, we had a genuine rival. It was the cinema, uh, which appealed to millions and not to thousands. And the heroes and heroines of, of the cinema commanded an immense amount of adoration, uh, the world's sweetheart in Mary Pickford, and so on. Uh, and then, of course, before long, there appeared uh, a still more I may say, devastating competitor, in fact, antagonist, the really fatal invention of the radio. Now, once radio appeared on the scene, one may say there was almost an eternal farewell to good singing generally. It became much more limited anyway. If you want to know why, the cause is simple. I think I was telling you about Rossini also, the Liceo in Bologna, and uh, when he was principal, and how the minimum course for a soprano was five years. And for 18 months, the unhappy female was not allowed to sing an aria, only exercises. Seven years was the minimum course for a basso. Right. Now, what do we come to in the case of the radio? Some bright little creature with a six months training at some college or other, or lack of it, applies for a job at the radio. Turns out to have a pretty little voice, you know, pure in quality, without much tremolo, naturally ideal for the purposes of the microphone. The microphone doesn't demand uh, evidences of musical culture or, or insight into any composition. It just wants a pleasing little sound which, of course, could be magnified at the will of the operator, just as the voice of Flagstadt or Tobaldi can be uh, diminished uh, again at the will or the caprice, very often the caprice of the operator. You can't let yourself go on the radio anymore. You can go on the gramophone record. It's circumscribed. It's inhibited. Caution is the watchword uh, attached to the use of any mechanical appliance.